I track the passage of time in my RPG campaigns, and so should you. And it's actually really easy. I mentioned this in my Dragonlance uh, Lunar Magic video about the, the way that 5th edition and 2nd edition Dragonlance track the phases of the moon, or don't track the phases of the moon in the case of 5th edition. I think it's not that hard to do, this sort of time tracking. I came up with a pretty simple system that I think might work generally for anyone. And here's what it is. What you need. A deck of cards. Now, if possible, use the, like, Pathfinder um, gear cards or something similar, and you'll see why in a minute. But if you don't have those, you can literally use anything, like a deck of Magic the Gathering cards, a deck of poker cards, it really doesn't matter. Set your deck of cards on the table. When an hour of in-game time passes, take a card from the deck and place it in the discard pile. How do you know when an hour passes in-game? Well, it depends. Dungeons. Tracking time in a dungeon or a similarly insulated and linear environment is easy. It's one room on your map equals one hour. Yeah, sometimes players go into a room, do a single perception check, and then leave when they see that it's empty. It takes 20 seconds in real time. But in-game, this simple interaction represents player characters moving cautiously into a darkened room, shining their torch into every corner, and painstakingly searching every crevice for a hidden panel or a secret door. Even when nothing happens in a room, the assumption is that players tried to make something interesting happen. That's what they're there for. They're delving into dungeons for wealth or for fame or to find a kidnapped noble or to defeat a nefarious plot. They're not breezing past alcoves. They're not obliviously speed walking through corridors. They're moving slowly, methodically, carefully. It takes time. One location on the map equals one hour, no exceptions. That's one card off of your deck, every room. When something does happen in a room, PCs find loot, or a secret door, or they engage in combat. You have the option of adding another hour to that location. Even though combat happens very quickly, even in-world, well, actually in-world, not usually in real life, it's, it's fair to assume that recovering from combat, like calming your nerves after a near-death experience, or cleaning up your weapon of all the blood and gristle, looting the bodies, that takes time. So just add an hour. So a room is an hour, a room with an event is two hours. Outside the dungeon. When gameplay is happening outside of a dungeon, it's a little harder to track time. Story progression in dungeons usually rely on changes in location. When players move from one room to another, they encounter the next plot point. Outside a dungeon, though, the location may not need the change as frequently for the story to progress. I find that a good indication of stuff happening outside the dungeon are dice rolls. Whether it's a nature or orienteering role to find your way through wilderness, or a persuasion or diplomacy role to convince an NPC to help you, or just plain old combat. When there's dice rolling, it probably means an hour has passed. As in the dungeon, sometimes an hour seems like a lot. After all, combat happens in a six second round. A simple persuasion check to convince a vendor to give you a discount on chainmail surely wouldn't take a whole hour. But actually, I find that when dice roll, it's usually because activity is happening. Even a simple persuasion check, for instance, you don't just go up to the person and say something persuasive. You build up a rapport. You're talking to them. You're making small talk. You're getting on their good side so that they give you a discount in the end. Maybe the role itself is for a simple interaction, but the player character has had to walk to the store. They've had to meander around, get the shopkeep's attention, assess the chain mail they want to buy, and so on. 45 minutes, 30 minutes, even 20 minutes, round it up, Call it an hour, flip a card. No dice. Sometimes a gaming session consists mostly of roleplay. Many game groups have at least one session in which nobody rolled even a single die. Some groups have that kind of session more often than not. I admit I rarely have these sessions, and when I do, the stakes are low enough that tracking time isn't that important. Unless there's a significant in-game time constraint, it's often not significant to me whether the PCs spend 3 hours or 12 hours asking around for clues about the location of the mythical dungeon. However, sometimes there is a ticking clock, and time does matter, so you have to track it. When a session consists mostly of roleplay, I count an encounter as an hour. You talk to a city guard, one hour. You talk to 
a shopkeep, one hour. You talk to each other, one hour. Traveling also usually imposes time, and you can kind of wing that as well. I mean, there's formulas for calculating time spent traveling in the Dungeon Master Guide, so you can use that as well. But for short distances, you could just say it was an hour to get from here to there. Bonus, random stuff. A benefit to using Pathfinder or Starfinder item cards is that you have a source of random stuff when you need it. And as a Dungeon Master, you're going to need it. It's got nothing to do with time, but inevitably there are times when a player looks behind a curtain or in a hollow of a tree or in a wardrobe, and you have to come up with something better than you find nothing. When your time deck happens to contain random RPG content, you can fall back on it whenever you need a quick idea. Even if you just write some ideas on a deck of poker cards and use it, I think having a deck of random stuff is a really useful Dungeon Master hack. Reporting. Once you've used tracking time with cards, you have in-world data you can use for all kinds of mechanics. Spells. You, you can now track spells that last hourly. Long rests. You can reasonably disallow players to take a long rest when they've just had a, a long rest two hours ago. Exhaustion or fatigue. Players unable or unwilling to take long rests after eight hours, I think it is, gain one level of exhaustion in 5e, and are fatigued after 16 hours in Pathfinder 2. When time is of the essence, you can confidently tell players how much time has passed. Super useful. Implement it in your next game. Honestly, all you need is a deck of cards and the wherewithal to flip them when appropriate. Give it a go. Thanks for watching.